Alrighty, I have a construction update for you guys today. And what better day to post it than the day that we all get to go to Wonderland from 6 to 11 p.m. Um, but full honesty, um, a lot is not going on at Canada's Wonderland. And when I flew the drone, I was kind of shocked. So this is uh, filmed throughout the whole day. Um, a couple days ago. So if you look over by Shockwave, they are doing a little bit of land clearing there. Um, we'll get into detail about that a little later on in this video. But if you look over at Extreme Skyflyer, they're setting up that Haunt and Winterfest stage. And now it makes sense as to why they went to the back end of the ride to work on these footings because they're going to have this area set up and ready to go for Haunt and Winterfest. Now that does complicate things because there are areas that they need to work on still. Um, so only about half of the um, extreme Skyflyer element uh, it was actually completed. So they still have about half those footings to work on. Um, no vertical construction has uh, occurred. No new track pieces have arrived either. They are working on removing a little more trees, but even that was a little slow moving. Um, it's quite interesting because it does look like a construction project that is not in a rush to get anywhere. So I'll tell you this from outside the mountain, because obviously we don't know what's going on inside the mound. There was zero work going on on footing. So there was no signs on Thursday and no signs today of any work going on on the footing for Extreme Skyflyer. Um, so when we go today, we'll obviously be looking inside the mountain to see if that anything has transpired. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, honestly, for anyone that knows me personally, I am obsessed with construction projects. I could cover them all day. Um, to be honest, I've been getting into things even outside of theme parks, and I do still have a heavy interest in those as well. So it's kind of interesting. I've been discovering some new things about me. Um, but nonetheless, I will point this out. So if you watch very closely there, you're going to see a little orange boom lift um, heading up in between Guardian's uh, support columns and lift hill. And you're going to see them. They're marking these little orange dots on the mound. Now, if you watch the POV very closely, those orange dots that they're marking on the mound um, correlate with the support columns. They're going to have to come shooting up out of the mound to hold our beloved Alpen Fury. Um, in the sky after its first launch. So that was really cool to catch on the drone. Um, and if you look very closely, maybe I'll use some arrows here to point out those little orange dots for you because it's a little hard. There's one right there, but insert arrow here, Brendan. Um, there is a orange dot there. They're going up to mark them. You can also see a little uh, emergency door there opened up to the old pathway that guests used to be able to walk on um, to get to the top of the mountain. But um, I do want to talk about something, um, the trees. So from what I've been noticing, there is going to be a ton of tree removal. Now, while it's exciting that we're getting Elpen Fury, and I'm super excited about that, it is really sad that we are losing some of these original trees um, from Wonderland's birth year. Uh, it takes a really long time for tree growth to occur, um, and these trees really helped with the sight line of the mountain, making it look more realistic, hiding some of its flaws. Um, so it is truly sad that we're going to see a lot of these trees go um, because, again, it really helped with the mountain sight line. It was a really nice to walk around the mountain. It almost felt like you were on a nature walk. So unfortunately, we're going to lose those trees. But oh well, um, with good things leaving, better things arrive. Um, I say that, but again, air is needed. But <laughs> nonetheless... Um, uh, over the last week, construction has progressed um, a lot slower visually on the outside of the mountain um, than I would have liked to see. I would even say haunt prep has progressed a little slower than I would have liked to see. And on the topic of haunt, um, I'm suspecting that we're going to see a different layout for corn stalkers. So with the new maze entering action theater, I've done a little mapping. Um, I think you're going to enter Spirit Manor, you're going to exit Spirit Manor, you're going to enter into Demons of the Deep, you're going to come out of Demons of the Deep, and you're going to head into Cornstalkers backwards, so the opposite direction that you normally travel, and then you could potentially exit Cornstalkers out towards Tundra Twister, if that makes sense. Now, take that with a grain of salt, um, that is just me. Um, making a prediction based off of um, 
the mapping of things. So do not take that as solid, um, a solid statement. Please take that with a grain of salt and we'll have to wait and see if I'm correct. Um, with that being said, uh, is there anything else to talk about? Oh yes, I said we would talk about Shockwave. So later on the day, as you can see, they lay down this. We know that the exit gift shop is going to need to take up a little bit of that area. They um, talked about how they're going to remove the back portion of uh, Shockwave's queue line to uh, accommodate that. So I think we were just seeing a little bit of that pre-work go on. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see what Elpenfest ends up looking like. We haven't really seen any renderings as to what the area is truly going to look like. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen with that. Anyways, stay tuned for more in-park updates coming tomorrow. Um, and then more drone updates next week. And if you are impatient for in-drone updates, follow us on Patreon. Um, anytime I fly, I'll post stuff on there. Um, and then I'm allowed to talk a little more freely about some things on Patreon as well. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.